Following the headlines of this hour on BTV News. Central region to experience prolonged heavy rain due to tropical depression post Typhoon Sulik. Later on, activities at Mongkai border gate return to normal after Yagi's ravages. In our world news, Israel launches intensive airstrikes against southern Lebanon. Broadcasting from Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, VTV News starts right now. Good afternoon. It is currently 3 p.m. local time, and you're tuning in to 30 minutes of VTV News. I'm Dylan Le with the latest updates. Now, from Tanghua to Guangbing Province are facing heavy rainfall today, Friday, September the 20th, due to a tropical convergence area, despite Typhoon Sulik's dissipation. Nghe An and Hating are forecast to receive 50 to 100 millimeters of rain, with some areas exceeding 150 millimeters. In Tenghua and Guangbing provinces, expected rainfall is about 20 to 60 millimeters, with isolated spots over 100 millimeters. Authorities are warning of the possibility of landslides in hilly and mountainous regions. The Zhang River in Guangbing province is projected to peak above alert level 2, increasing flood risks in low-lying areas. Additionally, water levels in Hating's rivers are also anticipated to continue rising through Friday and Saturday, reaching alert level 1 to 2 and level 2 to 3. The downstream section of the La River is also projected to reach alert level 1, increasing risks of riverbank landslides and flooding in urban and low-lying areas. Guangbing province has been hit by heavy rainfall since Thursday due to the remnants of Typhoon Sulik, particularly in mountainous regions. In Bochek district, nine areas experienced flooding with water levels reaching 1 to 5 meters, isolating several villages. Heavy rainfall in Minghua district also led to flooding that impacted over 600 households in Tenhua and Yinhua communes, where total rainfall exceeded 590 millimeters. In Tuenhua district, rising water levels in Zhang River surpassed alert levels 1 and 2, causing local flooding with depths of 2 to 3 meters in some areas. In response to the flooding and landslide risks, local authorities ordered the evacuation of residents from at-risk areas. As of Friday morning, more than 800 households, equivalent to about 3,000 people, have been evacuated from districts including Le Thuy, Mo Chek, Tuenhua, Minghua, and Dong Hui City. Also on Thursday night, Guangnam Provincial Border Guards completed an emergency evacuation of all residents in village 56B, Dak Pre Commune, Namzang District, following the discovery of a significant crack in the mountainside. The crack, over 120 meters long and between 1.5 and 5 meters deep, emerged after several days of heavy rain, with many areas showing signs of landslides. 11 households totaling more than 40 people in this area have been relocated to ensure their safety. Border guards are on duty to monitor the crack and respond to any developments. The commune has reported the incident to Namzang district officials to plan the next steps for ensuring residents' safety. Bagzang province has declared an emergency due to a landslide on Eastern Mountain. The landslide stretching hundreds of meters was caused by the impact of Typhoon Yagi. Local authorities had to evacuate an entire secondary school in Huasun commune and dozens of residents. The landslide was discovered at 8 a.m. on September 13 during the Go River's peak flood. Authorities immediately cleared vegetation and covered the area with tarpaulins to prevent water seepage in the cracks. It is determined that this landslide is wider and deeper than the previous one, and perhaps this is a sign that the risk of a severe landslide is getting higher. Ten households, comprising over 40 people living directly below the landslide area, had to be evacuated. Hurt's family has to stay with relatives, uncertain about when they will be able to return home. 
Everything's been disarray for a week now. We hope that the authorities will soon take action to fix the situation. If the situation is too dangerous to fix, we should be allowed to move to resettlement area. The landslide area falls under the management of Army Corps No. 12, Ministry of National Defense. This landslide incident at Eastern Mountain is very dangerous, so we request that all levels and authorities, including Army Corps No. 12, focus on handling the landslide as soon as possible, so that people can live in peace at the foot of Eastern Mountain. Over 400 students from Hua Sun Secondary School are studying at Hua Sun Primary School. To address this situation, the government is expediting the construction of a new secondary school. After landing in Vietnam on Thursday afternoon, Typhoon Sulik, the fourth typhoon to hit Vietnam this year, caused heavy rain and strong winds in the north-central region. In Hating province, although the storm did not make direct landfall, strong winds caused uh, many houses to lose their roofs and trees to break. Fortunately, there were no fatalities or injuries. Local authorities, along with military and police forces, were quickly mobilized to help residents overcome the consequences of the typhoon. Heavy rains and strong winds blew the roof off of Nguyen Ai's house in Cẩm Dương commune. The storm blew the roof off my house and caused a part of it to collapse. We are in a difficult situation and don't know what to do to stabilize our lives. Storm Solik caused heavy rain on a large scale, blew the roofs off of nearly 100 houses in Hating province and top up many trees. There was no loss of life. Hundreds of soldiers have come to support people in re-roofing their homes replanting trees and cleaning the environment. We have requested units to stand ready for search and rescue operations, relocate people to safe areas, support people in overcoming the storm's consequences, and mitigate possible rain and flood damage. Given the risk of landslides and flash floods in mountainous areas, provincial authorities have directed districts and communes to inspect high-risk locations and urgently evacuate residents. We have asked the authorities of district and commons to increase inspection of landslide-prone areas. We have promptly moved people out of the critical areas. The highest levels of alerts have been issued for floods and landslides in mountainous areas from Ha Ting to Thuyen Hue. Residents in mountainous and hillside areas must remain vigilant and be prepared to evacuate quickly from landslide-prone zones. In response to recent flooding, local authorities are closely monitoring the situation and issuing warnings about potential flash floods, landslides and ground subsidence. This action follows a directive from the Ministry of Health addressing the impacts of Typhoon Sulik. The ministry has instructed local authorities and medical facilities to ensure adequate supplies of essential medicines and promptly replenish reserves of medications, chemicals and supplies needed for disaster prevention, search and rescue operations. Additionally, efforts are underway to organize environmental sanitation and disease prevention measures, ensuring access to clean water and safe food. Medical services are being prioritized for flood-affected individuals. Localities are also tasked with reporting damages and proposing suitable measures for recovery. Now, before we move on, let's have a look at the exchange rate between the Vietnam Dome and some world currencies in today's market. Coming up next on VTV News. Activities at Mongkai Border Gate return to normal after Yagi's ravages. And later on, Digital Library Space aims to educate youth on Southern region's history and culture. 
Welcome back to VTV News Live. Now, Typhoon number three, or Typhoon Yagi, is the most powerful typhoon to hit the East Sea in 30 years and the most devastating to land in Vietnam in 70 years. It has caused extensive damage to lives, property, livelihoods, and business operations. According to estimates by the Ministry of Planning and Investment, the country's annual GDP growth could decrease by about 0.15 percentage points due to the damage from Typhoon Yagi. Over 2,600 fish farming cages are being rebuilt from scratch. Quang Ning has the highest number of damaged cages in the country and suffered the largest economic losses, reaching 976 million U.S. dollars. Although growth may not meet our expectations, we are still determined to aim for double-digit growth. If we can maintain double-digit growth this year, it will mark the 10th consecutive year that Quang Ning has achieved this milestone. FDA Enterprises have also resumed operations and the tourism sector has started welcoming its first groups of visitors after the storm. Ranked second in terms of economic losses is Haiphong, with over 447 million US dollars in damages, equivalent to one-tenth of the city's total revenue last year. Factories are currently undergoing repairs while continuing production and 100% of the seaports in the area have resumed operations. Nationwide, the estimated property damage is approximately over 2 billion US dollars. National GDP is expected to decrease by around 0.15 percentage points due to the storm and its aftermath. The agriculture, forestry, and fisheries sector is the most affected, with a decline of 0.33 percentage points. As reported by the Ministry of Transport, Nearly 4,200 locations are in need of restoration, with estimated costs totaling approximately 117 million US dollars. Additionally, damaged tourism and accommodation facilities are undergoing urgent repairs. Numerous establishments are concerned about the potential impact on the international tourist season, which extends from September this year through to April of next year. In Guangning province, all customs clearance activities have returned to normal, with capacity even reaching 130 percent. In addition to ensuring the smooth flow of goods, Guangning is also processing customs procedures for other border provinces affected by flash floods and landslides. When Typhoon Yagi hit, Leaders of the Mongkai International Border Gate in Guangning Province coordinated with their Chinese counterparts to close the border for 24 hours. Afterward, they proactively worked with partners to streamline import-export activities. The border guards, customs officers and medical staff are all working hard to create the best conditions for businesses to clear goods quickly and conveniently. The Mongkai International Border Gate has mobilized additional staff to increase its capacity. We're focused on facilitating procedures for trade and avoiding congestion. Not only is the trading of goods crucial, but immigration is also essential for residents on both sides of the border to return to normalcy. We have created the best conditions to ensure that the operation of travel and import-export businesses can return to normal. People and passengers entering and exiting every day range from 10,000 to 15,000. The swift return to normal operation at the Mongkai border gate after the storm will directly boost economic recovery for people and businesses. The Vietnam Bank for Social Policies, VBSP, has announced that interest collection for borrowers affected by Typhoon Yagi and subsequent flooding will be suspended until December the 31st. The bank has directed its branches in collaboration with local authorities, socio-political organizations managing interested funds, and relevant agencies to assess the damage sustained by borrowers. Priority tech capital will be allocated to severely affected areas to provide loans aimed at helping businesses and production recover. The Vietnam Bank for Social Policies will draft a plan and submit it to relevant ministries and the government, proposing to increase this year's credit growth by approximately 199 million U.S. dollars. 
Floodwaters have inundated the fields in the Mekong River's upstream area. As the waters rise, they breathe life into the livelihoods of those who depend on it. Residents in the upstream area now hope for a bountiful harvest season. More on this to follow. This is the bunch of water spinach that Tam picked in just a few minutes from this flooded field. It's enough to improve his family's meal today. For Tam and many others in the flooded fields of Hongge District, Dong Thap Province, having water means having income. There's a lot of water spinach. The higher the water level, the better it is. A bunch like this sells for 10,000 Vietnam dong at the market. In the past, Rising water levels signal the start of upstream residents' harvest season for fish cages and water vegetables. Now, they've adopted a new approach, storing fish during floods and waiting until the water recedes to harvest larger fish. The higher the water, the happier we are because this means fish can grow strongly and more fish will come here. After finishing the rice farming, we can also do the fish farming to have more income. The water level is fine now, but if it rises a little more, the people here will be happier because there will be a lot of shrimp and fish and the remaining fields will be flooded to help kill pests and build up alluvium. The flood season not only brings joy and income to people in the upstream area, but it also strengthens people's connection with one another a year ago, a digital library was established to introduce young people to the history, culture, and people of Vietnam's southern region. After a year of operation, the project's organizers launched an open space at Ho Chi Minh City Book Street to better engage with the youth. After one year, the Nguyen Anh Library has digitized over 5,000 pages, mostly from rare books and precious documents. Thanks to digital technology, its database now features prominent figures from Vietnam's southern region. This digital library will provide writers and researchers access to data, enabling them to create books and research papers that can be passed on to future generations. A year ago, the digital library launched with the primary goal of using modern tools to connect with future generations. Now, this open space brings the culture, arts and people of Vietnam's southern region to life beyond the digital pages. The prime example is the traditional performance by artisans from Bên Tre province. This is my first time watching a performance like this. It helps strengthen our love for our southern region and our fellow people. This space gives us an opportunity to bring more content related to the southern region to young people. Through this, they can learn about the history and the traits of the Vietnamese people, arousing in them a love for our country and the desire to protect and develop it. The Nguyen An Ninh Digital Library's open space will not only help people in the country, but also overseas Vietnamese and younger generations gain deeper insights into the history, geography and culture of the southern region. Authorities of Fukushima Prefecture in Japan and Viet Travel have signed a strategic cooperation agreement to boost tourism between Vietnam and Japan. This collaboration aims to leverage the potential of both sides and promote tourist exchanges. Under the agreement, Viet Travel and Fukushima Prefecture will implement various initiatives to increase international tourist flows, including the operation of charter flights connecting major Vietnamese cities such as Hanoi, Da Nang, Ho Chi Minh City directly to Fukushima Airport. This effort is designed to make it easier for Vietnamese tourists to experience the unique beauty and culture of Fukushima. By 2025, Viet Travel aims to bring over 21,600 Vietnamese tourists to Japan, underscoring the growing partnership between the two sides in the tourism sector.
Hanching, situated within Gondao National Park in Baria Vung Tau Province, has been officially recognized by the Vietnam Record Organization as the seabird sanctuary with the highest breeding density in Vietnam. Covering approximately two hectares, Hòn Chung, also known as Hòn Đá Bạc or Hòn Phú Thọ, attracts around 10,000 migratory seabirds each year from April to October, with an impressive average nesting density of 4.88 eggs per square meter. Previously, Gondao National Park earned recognition as a Ramsar World Site and became part of the Indian Ocean and Southeast Asia Marine Turtles and their Habitat Conservation and Management Network, or IOC. It has also been certified as an ASEAN Heritage Park by the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity. Additionally, the Vietnam Record Book Center acknowledged Gondao as the leading site for raising, hatching, and releasing sea turtles into the wild in Vietnam. Coming up next in our world news. Israel launches intensive airstrikes against southern Lebanon. And Russia aims to increase drone production tenfold in 2024. Now moving on to our world news, Israel carried out intensive airstrikes Thursday against several towns in southern Lebanon amid growing concerns about an escalation of the conflict between Hezbollah and Tel Aviv. There are no reports of casualties yet. Lebanon's state news agency said more than 50 airstrikes occurred in towns in southern Lebanon. Meanwhile, Israel's military said its air force hit about 100 Hezbollah launchers and other infrastructure sites. The tension follows two waves of explosions targeting wireless devices in Lebanon that resulted in 37 deaths and thousands of injuries. Russian President Vladimir Putin claimed on Thursday that Russia plans to increase drone production almost 10 times this year. In 2023, the Russian army received about 140,000 drones of various types. This year, Moscow aims to produce 1.4 million, Putin stated. He added that by 2030, 48 research and production centers for drone design, testing and mass production will be established across the country. Putin also mentioned that Russia is making near weekly advances in drone technology and needs to develop its drone defenses techno uh, technology that detects, disrupts and destroys attacking drones. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen announced on Thursday 10 billion euros in emergency aid from the EU's cohesion funds to support member states devastated by floods caused by Storm Boris. The EU will also use its solidarity fund to repair and reconstruct damaged areas. Over the past week, unusually heavy rains have triggered flash floods, devastating large areas of Austria, Poland, Romania and the Czech Republic. The disaster has left 24 people dead, thousands of homes flooded, and infrastructure severely damaged. Can artificial intelligence make movies? During the 81st Venice International Film Festival, a unique short film competition called the AI Reply Film Festival showcased innovative views of AI and quality storytelling. More on this to follow. This animated film was created using artificial intelligence. To Dear Me by Giselle Tong won the Best Short Film Award at the AI Reply Film Festival held recently in Italy. The film stood out not only for its profound plot, but also for its innovative use of AI to enrich the storytelling, seamlessly combining digital techniques with emotional depth. We wanted to have a, a a real festival where we will be hosted. And, uh, and so we started simply searching for, for that. We were contacting a lot of different film festivals. AI technology was a central issue in last year's Hollywood strike. Performers fear AI will make the unauthorized use of their likenesses commonplace. Actors are also concerned that fully AI-generated characters, dubbed metahumans, might steal their roles. 
you know, I think that AI will present a tremendous opportunity, um, mostly in, in that you can do things using AI that are not even possible. They're not conceivable or possible to do in any other way. Um, and so I think that that's naturally how things will evolve. The Reply AI Film Festival is more than just a showcase for AI-generated films. It reflects a broader shift in the convergence of technology and creativity within the film industry, signaling the growing acceptance of AI in mainstream cinema. Before we say goodbye, let's have a look at the weather forecast for Vietnam and other locations in the world. And that is all that we have for this hour on VTV News. To rewatch our program, you can visit our website or YouTube channel or download a mobile app VTV Go for more. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.